Well, good day and welcome. I'm Dr. Kurt Grange. Um, I actually have a PhD in nutrition and a doctorate in naturopathic medicine. For the past 15 years, I've been teaching uh, physicians, healthcare givers, uh, and about anybody that'll listen to me about the uh, nutritional products that come naturally within the, uh, the world. Many of the main ones that we're talking about is the uh, ionic coral minerals. Now, I have taught this all over the world. And some people listen, some people don't. Those that are interested in their health are the ones that are going to actually perk up and say, whoa, this is some of the missing information that, that uh, I didn't know was out there. Because often a person is going to reach the time when they have to make a decision that the fact that, hey, maybe their life isn't exactly going the way that they should be going. Maybe they really have uh, left out on something. Maybe I do need supplementation within my body. Maybe I do want to hold off on that prospect of dying because our body is actually set up to run for about 120 years. That's the way it's supposed to go. But because we're like a, uh, well, we're like a storage battery, like in your car. Uh, it, when we were born, we're all totally charged. <clears throat> but throughout the uh, generations and the years, we start discharging our battery, mainly because of the way that we live, because of the foods that we eat, and the stress that happens to be in our life. And what my whole purpose is today is to educate you. That's my job. And when I finish with this, I hope that I have given you enough information so that you can make some intelligent decisions about the way you want your health to go. So one of the things I'm going to start off with is the very basic premise of health. And that is the fact that the body has to be in an alkaline condition. Now this is not new knowledge. We've known this since uh, the, the early 30s. And even though I've been professing this since the, for the last 15 years, other people have decided that this might be a bandwagon to go on. And because we went back and actually looked at what took place in the Eastern medicines, in the Arabic medicines, we came to the conclusion, tra that the body has to be alkaline in order for it to work correctly. Now, as I said, there's quite a few written materials that are out there now. For instance, Dr. Arthur Guyton. He wrote most of the books that uh, people like myself, when we went through med school, had to read. And what he says is that the first step in maintaining health is to alkalize the body. That's a pretty powerful statement. And as I said, it's been around for a long time. This is what actually creates homeostasis or balance within the body. And if you get out of balance, this acid alkaline balance, then it's going to affect every single organ and system within the body. Alkalinity equals oxygen. Oxygen equals good health. Acidity equals disease. It's that simple. Other people have also followed this in, another one that I really like because I use the title of his book quite often in some of the seminars that I give, Alkalize or Die. Pretty, again, very, very powerful statement with it. But what he says, and I totally agree with, the countless names that you give to diseases or the symptoms, it doesn't matter what they are because the bottom line, the very bottom line is there's just too much acidity within the body. And this is created by the lack of ionic organic minerals. Another person who I really respect besides Dr. Guyton is a Nobel laureate, uh, Dr. Linus Pauling. He says all of the time in his lectures and in his books that all disease starts with the absence of enough ionic organic minerals within the body. The problem with us physiologically is that we can't make alkalizing. We can't create alkalization within our body. We can create acidity very easy, as you'll learn in just a few moments. But we must take in our alkalizing factors in our foods. Okay? And that's the only way that we can actually get them. All right, another one that I really like, because I, what I'm trying to do here is to show you that this information is out there. You just have to go searching for it. Dr. Michael Cutler, high acid levels in the body are the root cause of many of today's frustrating chronic diseases that we have to deal with that we're taking drugs for. Another one, Dr. William Hay, all disease is caused by autotoxification. That's simply self-poisoning. And it's due because of the acid accumulation within the body for, you know, for, for many different reasons. But this one's my favorite. 
because this is probably the most powerful statement that has been said about this for a long, long time. 1931, as a matter of fact. Otto Warburg, another uh, Nobel Prize winner, and some others that you can read in there. Sagan. These, I've kind of put this into a capsule because what they came up with is very powerful. Here's a synopsis of their research and their work. There's no known disease-causing organism. And I've given you some samples here, you know, the, the bacteria, plasmodiums, and stuff that uh, create some very interesting diseases within our body. Or degenerative condition. And I've given you some examples of what uh, degenerative conditions are. But what this is, is no known disease-causing organism or degenerative condition can continue to reproduce or to degenerate in an alkaline, oxygenized body. Alkalinity equals oxygen. Oxygen equals good health. Okay? Now, so that we can all be on the same page, we have to have some background information. Remember, this is an educational process we're doing here. This is the pH scale. <clears throat> now, the pH scale runs from 0 to 14. 14 being very alkaline and 0 being, uh, of course, the most acidic that there is. Actually, our body would die at either end of those. But if you'll notice in the center of this, the, the, the middle, the average, is a number 7. This is where pure water is. That's where, in pH, pure water would be approximately a 7. Anything below that 7 is considered to be acidic. Anything above it is considered to be alkaline. Now, take a look at the things that are representative there. Our prime pH without, within our body, there's 10 areas around our body that have to maintain a, a pH balance. Our stomach is the largest. It can go from a 1.5 all the way up to about an 8. Okay, big range there. But the rest of our body is not that lucky, especially our blood. Our blood has to re uh, remain a very, very close tolerance in the pH, from about a 7.35 to a 7.45. If we drop below 7.3, we die. If we go above a 7.5, we die. So the body fights very hard using its alkalizing minerals to keep the blood and the other fluids around the body at approximately a 7.4. That's where our metabolism is the highest, our energy level is the highest. We're literally a clean, burning, metabolic engine. And more importantly in these days, it's where our immunity is the strongest. So our, that's where we want to try to get is approximately a 7 and above. Now if you look at this, uh, it, uh, above the, uh, the seven are the things that you've been told to eat all of your life. Alkalizing fruits and veggies, whole food sources. Now we're going to be talking quite a bit a little bit later on about the uh, coral minerals, the ionic coral minerals. And notice where they are on this particular scale, just about a 10. Okay? But then we're going to drop below that because this is where the majority of people really are and where our disease problems begin with. As we drop down into lactic acid, now lactic acid is what is created when you lack oxygen but still have to do physical work of some type or another. Okay? That's the next morning when you wake up after you've been working in the garden or doing an athletic event and you're stiff and sore. That's the buildup of lactic acid because your body ran out of oxygen to continue your movement. But you know, we've evolved with this. Our body knows how to deal with this pretty well. So that's not the biggest factor in getting our body below that 7 and keeping us there in the acidic side. It's the other factors that we have not evolved with that is creating it. For instance, white flour and white sugar. You know, we're really the only species that will continually eat white flour and white sugar. Not a great testament to our intelligence. You see, white flour and white sugar have no nutritive value whatsoever. And in fact, they create some major problems around the body, like fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, and, and a few others that go along with it. So any white flour and white sugar, we really want to cut out of our diet because it's very acidic in the way that it works. But the really big one, the one that I get on the soapbox with, rave my red flag, and talk to any group that I can about, is actually soft drinks. Now notice where the soft drinks are here. They're down at about a level two, 